So, uh, yeah, we're here to film a video, but uh, more importantly, I want my present, please, now. I've got your <laughs> present here. <laughs> Little presentation time. I've been waiting for this. Here you go, I'm your ginger Santa. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Danny, last piece of the puzzle. Thank you very much. So the puzzle, puzzle in question is this absolutely stunning board by Mr. Neil Grimes from NRGFX. Um, and this is the last piece. Yes. So ready and waiting. Look at that. Cables ready and power to go, ready to go. So this is the other cool thing you get with a. Uh... <laughs> Whoops! There's another order coming. Oh, yeah. hot off the shelves already. <laughs> so this is the really cool thing about um, your pedals. Like, like I said, I'm, nothing that's on here, but you know, I bought something before and it was literally like a metal can in a can, just knocking about. With, but you know, you get hand drawn instructions. Uh, with everything you need to know on the back, which is really cool. Um, famous black tissue paper. <laughs> Adds to the process of unboxing it, doesn't it? Though? Like It's almost like, if you could just see it straight away. It's just a box of paper. I know, but there's, no paper there's nothing else in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here it is. So you kindly lent me yours for the gig. Um, yeah, you had a gig weekend. weekend. Uh, just because this was still being finalised. Newer version of the Aurora. Oh, it looks so it's a little update. But um, we'll get into details of everything else in a minute. But do you mind popping it on for me? There you go. You grab that plank yeah. and I'll. There you go. Stick it on here. Should have the camera, shouldn't I? There we go. I don't usually work this way up. <laughs> there we go. Easy as that, I got straight in there. You say that. I yeah, now, yeah, pressure. Now I've got to do down thumbs. before I've got the cables in. Oh. There we go. Oh, yeah. Nice. Done. Ta da. I'm so excited now. Um, so, if I just talk through what my sort of basic thoughts were before building this board. Neil can then tell you how I was wrong on almost everything I asked for, <laughs> and then take you through the signal chain and stuff like that. Um, so originally I just wanted, the staple things I wanted was uh, a dual drive pedal in the power. Um, so the way I set it would be to have one side that's quite a natural sounding, you know, just a, not a boost, but in between a boost and a drive. Yep. And then the other side a bit heavier, just for those uh, moments where I tried to shred out and fail um, and also to have some sort of mid boost um, pedal to complement that so just something to give me that little extra kick yep. without making it too fizzy or anything like that because uh, my mistakes in the past have just been to keep adding gain on gain on gain mm. uh, and then I wonder yeah. why and um, that's when I said to you well coming very soon I've got the monochrome series stuff yeah. and one of those is going to be a mid range focused drive mm. yeah so, um, yeah. so, so those two work awesome together. Like I say, we'll explain all exactly what they do in a minute. So then the rest of it happened just because I kept going around Neil's and I thought I kept trying <laughs> them and I thought, well, I need to walk away with that because <laughs> literally it was like an addiction because they're all just incredible. The first time we went round, um, obviously we knew you a bit before because I don't know if you remember, but you actually did this awesome job fixing my Cornford. Do you remember? The, Way back. Had yeah. A, had a, um, yeah, that's going back a bit. Now. Had a speaker switch on the back, like an impedance switch, and it had basically in the boot of my car had knocked against something yeah but then for open. some reason in that switch there was about 30 million springs and ball washers, bearings ball bearings yeah and it was all just floating around in this huge corn for yeah. head and somehow you managed I actually to... remade that switch did you yeah oh, you, okay. you did find all the parts in your boot right and yeah. you made that switch <laughs> and sealed it all up properly oh yeah so there you go incredible anyway <laughs> um but yeah me and rich went round neil played us through some of his range and 
went for a coffee afterwards and just started laughing the whole way home. Yeah, I remember we just standing there and we sort of, you were sitting there playing away and you're saying all the stuff and all I can remember is just, this is insane. This sounds so good. I, I, why, how do I, I, this is like, you know when you kind of, almost like, you know when you kind of have something, uh, a bit of food for the first time you've never had before. You're like, right. you're like how have I not come across this? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. never before. It was and, like that, but with guitar tone. And how is it in our same town of Eastbourne? Yeah. I mean, Eastbourne's a pretty small town. Smallish, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's actually got quite a cool little community going about. Yeah, like, yeah. You, know, you in the um, background quietly, yeah, you know, hiding yeah. away. Um, so yeah, mid boost and a drive pedal. That was pretty much the, the staples. Yep, and then. I then I convinced you, convinced you to get yeah, just those stuff you didn't really need. Yeah, just gave you, my, <laughs> gave, you gave you my debit card. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, but no, um, I wanted something that wasn't always on. So for me, whenever I have a clean sound, however great the clean amp is, I don't know why. Just when I play live, it just seems to disappear a bit. Um, maybe it's just the levels I'm setting, but I just love having something that's always on. It still makes it sound like the amp, but just a little bit of extra sizzle or something. Yeah. So that's where the kicker came in, um, which is just sounds awesome. Um, yeah. So that's post all your game, right yeah. at the end of the board. So what 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 kind of config configuration is this in? What, Should we go we, from the start? Where, where Should we, we start? go from the start? Yeah. Make it, where make it going? Going straightforward. In, We're in. starting off guitar, guitar, in. cable, cable in in. in. So <laughs> there you go. Um, poker is first of all. That's um, my take on the old school kind of treble booster. Oh, yeah, it gets yeah. called a treble booster. Mm -hmm. It's more like a high mid-range peak they create. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah, the old school kind of treble booster was almost like your first guitar effect, really, back in the late 60s or in, in the 60s oh, into the right, 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's my take. I've kind of rebooted that circuit, mm. that whole way of thinking, and just got kind of the characters of those old school ones, but added more to it mm. and made it more dependable and usable in modern scenarios, I guess, you know? Um, but it still needs to come first in your chain because like all those vintage treble booster style circuits, it interacts with the guitar. So it interacts mm. with your pickups and your yeah. controls to give you different sounds as well. So that's first in your chain. Gives you loads of boost, as I say, with a kind of high mid-range kind of vocal peak. It Definitely creates the naturally thing, itself. Yeah. Almost wire like, not quite yeah, as yeah. not quite as peaked, not quite as cue cued. Yeah. Um, um, but it's also then got bass and treble filters, so you can add more bass than you would with a treble oh, booster. Okay, so yeah, it can actually yeah. be a bass booster. It can, um, you can cut and boost the um, the high treble frequencies as well, so it can smooth off the top. Mm. So nice pre booster that gives you nice that sort of classic yeah. seventies rock sound, basically yeah. early seventies. So any Queen fans out there, you want to, you know, yeah, it'll do that. Yeah, it'll do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, then we're running the next effect we're into is the octopus, um, a octave up style effect um like you're getting a lot of old fuzz pedals that kind of thing and that's by um doesn't have any power does it doesn't have any power doesn't uh, just say for, um, bigfoot effects bigfoot yeah, effects yeah Bifo check out links down below Better. even though it looks like something you might make <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, theme, but... yeah. that's Close. not by me yeah, yeah, um, yeah there's no power um so it's all passive um so it's but it also needs a buffer before it so if you put your guitar straight in passive you know, yeah do you know what? Do you know what? Because I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, did, I thought all oh, all pedals power power. power. Yeah. So Generally, that, for those you're right to think yeah, that. Yeah. Say, for those who don't know, what what is how does that work in terms of your pedal board? Passive. Passive in, means. Why is a buffer? Passive means there's no power. There's no power going right, there. Yeah. All of these are getting nine volts into them yeah. to power up the circuitry. Mm. This has got a small amount of circuitry in it, um, like a guitar, like any passive guitar. Yeah. You know, yeah. that doesn't have active. EMGs or something like yeah, that. No, you know? Yeah, batteries. Yeah. Um, yeah, not using batteries. Yeah. Um, so it's passive. So it, the electronics in there are quite straightforward, but they won't work. You won't get any real sound out of this thing unless mm. you've got a buffer in front of it. Okay. Because you've got a transformer in there that needs driving. Um, so that's why we've gone poker into. There it is. Little the buffer. buffer yeah. so that's my little buffer. 
very nicely fits in under the pedal train. Yeah. Um, but it's worth saying, even if I didn't have that octave pedal, I still would have had a buffer under the board. Still a good idea. Mm, but yeah. a good buffer is a good idea. Um, I know people get scared of the whole idea of a buffer, of true bypass and buffered mm. bypass, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I think all your pedals are true bypass switching. Yeah. Um, but then having a good buffer at the beginning of chain is a good thing. Uh, could go into the science of it. Not going to bother. It's basically it make sure that you're not losing any signal, any clarity, any signal power through all the cabling. Because mm. every time you go through a bit of cable, every time you go through a pedal, through a switch, back out, you're adding cable, you're adding cable. Longer a cable gets, you get um, more resistance, more resistance wire, capacitance, yeah, 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 that yeah. kind of thing builds up. And so you've got the potential to lose so signal lose it, and you yeah. always hear that as a treble roll off mm. first. Yeah. Um, so that keeps everything clean. Uh, that's a, a discrete buffer, so it doesn't add any like real noise or hiss or anything like that. Doesn't no, no. change. Doesn't change the sound. I've spent a lot of time with this buffer circuit that I've designed, making sure it sounds the mm. same as like using a meter-long cable into your amp, mm. running through the buffer. You, so you just got a good solid sound. It's always yeah. it's gonna be consistent. It's the mm. big thing. It's consistency. That's it. So that will then drive the octopus as well. Uh, okay. That suddenly okay. comes to life. Gives you a nice octave up sound. Um, then we're going down um, to the wah. Everybody knows what Crybaby does, so I think. Does. Yeah. I think the only yeah. difference is it's mini and it's true bypass. So. Mm. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. Solid. Then up to the humper, as you mentioned, was to kind of pair with an overdrive yeah. to give you a mid-range focused pre-boost before the drive. Yeah. So to gain up, not all the frequencies, no. as you were saying, just adding more pre-gain can get mushy, mm. can get bright and brittle on the top end so by focusing those mid-range vocal frequencies let's those you did something interesting with this pedal didn't you that i haven't seen before so quite often i mean how many tube screamer clones are there millions yeah, yeah. i've never seen one well i'll let you explain it's it's not a tube screamer no it's not a tube screamer clone it's um i've taken the idea of a tube screamer and looked at what happens with the frequencies so with a tube screamer pre-gain there's a lot of bass roll off Mm. So it's cutting bass, then it's gaining up, clipping the signal, and then if you took an output there, you'll get really like bright in your face overdrive sound. Mm -hmm. So then it's having a quite heavy, pretty heavy um, high end roll off post. So what you're left with is a gained up mid range, and that's what gives you the mid humped right. tube screamer sound. So in this clean boost pedal, so it's complete, it's clean. There's no drive in this. Mm -hmm. um, it's giving you that gain up, yeah. that low cut, that high cut but they're actually adjustable as well. So with the maxed out, you're getting Tube Screamer-ish yeah, yeah. style, top and bottom roll off, but you can bring up the treble, you can bring up the bass, and yeah, get a bit more a bit full more range. Subtle. You can yeah. shape that yeah. pre-game yourself, slam it hard, bring it down lower than Unity if you want, whatever you want. So that's, cool. that works really nicely into a more yeah. full range. So the Purr has got as close as you kind of can really, full range mm. sounds. Your natural people will call it transparent and all those yeah, words yeah. that people don't like saying, you know. Um, well, yeah, we do cover that. We've done the <laughs> Purr and the yeah. uh, poker. poker in previous videos, haven't we? So. Yeah, so that's running into there. It changes the whole kind of feel of the Purr. Yeah. Mm. Focuses those mid-range really good for like lead lines and stuff. Yeah, so it lets you pop out in what would be the vocal kind of zone left in the, in the mix or something, you know. Mm. Um, then we're going into the fuzz. My fuzz, my mm. fuzz distortion, um, and I've added more to it. Mm. It's all this big version is already the one where you can fine tune all yeah. different kind of drive and fuzz sounds and um, distortion sounds. Um, 
So the thing that really drew me to this, just quickly, was that mm. I've always been scared of fuzzes, where to put them, how they're going to react, what's going to happen. And uh, so this, I believe, can be put post, pre-buffers, yeah. was, anything. That's a big mm. thing that when I started designing this pedal and, and a few kind of fuzz pedals that preceded it, yeah. um, that was something that I was a challenge I set myself. Because most like classic fuzz pedals, all your great sounding things like fuzz faces mm. and tone benders and all that kind of stuff, generally they need to go first in your signal chain, a bit like the uh, poker does. Yeah, yeah. Because it interacts with your guitar. You stick a buffer in front of that and it's just going to go really bright, harsh, maybe feedback, do loads of stuff you probably don't want to do. You yeah. might, but you probably don't want to. <laughs> There'll be nah. some people who like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And that can be cool. So, um, But I wanted to make a fuzz that can have all those kind of style and tonality of old fuzz pedals, but wasn't so dependent on those kind of things and so difficult to handle maybe, mm. or as you say, scary to yeah. someone who's new to fuzz world, Definitely. you know? Um, so it can sit after buffers. It's got a little preamp section in, mm. so it actually is buffering itself. So there's no worry about anything else before it. And then I've done some stuff in there. So when yeah. it <laughs> hits a kind of vintage style fuzz circuit, again, my own take on lots of influences and, yeah. Definitely. And stuff so um and then you can control loads of stuff with the circuit all the bias voltages different transistors and all this kind of stuff and the new version you've got um like extra distortion clipping to um, post fast distortion clipping different things for a boost high and low cut filtering so you can really mm. tune the uh, frequencies and stuff like that and so a bit of a crazy thing that we're here yeah, later see with um like internal feedback oscillation that the can be the thing I really like about what you do is, and it's pretty much, um, it's, it's slightly different, but even though it might look like there's quite a lot of switches, everything in the middle here is off. Yeah. So then it's literally like volume gain and, you know, and some extra mystical, little, mystical things. So it's, tuning switch I literally just knobs. pretty much just went at the gig. Cool. Yeah, that's what I, so I said to you. Look, stick <laughs> yeah. them there, start there, you'll get a big open fuzz sound. Yeah. And, and then, and it was really easy to get a sound from, and mm. that's been the case of all this board, uh, whether it's my amp live, whether it's through the Kemper here, um, whatever situation we've been put in, we've maybe spent a minute getting the sounds. Mm. It's not been like a whole process where we've had to really, you know, fine tune things. Oh, this switch that needs to be down. Yeah, pretty much yeah. everything works. That's that's <laughs> something that's quite important to me actually is making sure that even if you didn't, you threw them all over the place yeah. like this and you switched it on. All you really have to do is set the volume right, and it would still sound cool. It might not be the sound you're yeah, after, yeah, but it would sound really cool. I mean, cool. That, that's that's the thing to me. That's 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 really well thought out design in terms of you know. At the same time, it can be complex. You can set it you know subtly and have all these different things going on, but at the same breath, you can have well, I'll just do that, that, and that, and you're yeah. good to go. Yeah, make it yeah. simple or as complex exactly. as you wish it to be. Yeah, yeah. but in the same thing, you know, because I've, I've I've had pedals and you kind of like. You know, even one. I'm not a big fan of ones where you kind of you you've got to press in to get into a second stage, third stage, and it's like ah, oh, you get it lost. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, and too many hold down this for well. three seconds, do yeah. this. And it's like, I just went on and off that 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 and that done. Mm -hmm. You know, because you haven't got time to be playing. You're like, just yeah. and too many yeah. pedals as well. I find have mm -hmm. their sweet spot only in one part of the yeah. control. Mm -hmm. no, you know, classic fuzzers have that as well. Most of them. Oh, they only really do very much in the last bit or the first bit of the turn of a yeah. pop. I spend ages geeking around making sure the pot's sweet nicely and all sorts. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to worry about that. You well, just like, it, yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> make that my job. Um, yeah, so everything's got a nice sweep and feels like it's in the, yeah, does what you expect it to do. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next. Yeah. <laughs> After the kicker, we spoke about that, didn't we? So there's your yeah. post. That's my like always on mastering. Your post boost. That's a JFET mm. boost. So that has a little bit of colouring of the sound. So, right. um, so it's like a little preamp, little mastering post drive. Yeah. Um, you've got high and low cuts. Can add a little touch of compression at higher gains. Can give a little bit of a 
smile to the EQ can yeah, add a, yeah. can accentuate the top and the bottom that can just make things sound bigger and louder at the end of the mm. chain. And that's really cool. Um, um, I haven't actually said it yet because I've only done one gig with this board, so I'm still sort of like I say, it's really great, easy to get some sounds. But I will do some experiments with some things over time. But mm. the setting that you did in your demo video of uh, accentuating the bass and the treble, yeah, I haven't seen that before. But maybe that's just me, yeah, not doing mm -hmm. enough research. But it's normally it's adding one bass, the other. Yeah. one or the other. Yeah. But yeah, you can actually simultaneously achieve and cut as well. And cut, yeah. So you can cut from what I would. Both switches up is what I hear as my natural. Yeah. yeah. Response. So yeah. if you switch it in and out, it's going to be pretty much a guitar sound. Yeah. I say this is designed to have a bit of coloration on the sound. So, mm. uh, but then you can boost the treble, boost the bass, cut the treble, cut the bass. So you can actually, by cutting both treble and bass, you're left with the, more mids. Yeah. Gain up a little bit and you've got a little bit of mid range. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or it's, you can there's loads do the of power opposite. Behind and, that, isn't there? and there's loads of power as a boost. So you can use it. Yeah. So you're using it always on with a kind yeah. of just a little bit of gain up, yeah. Little gaining up, little bit of volume up, just to hit the amp that little bit harder. And also because I've got a sixty watt amp, like it just does that sort of limiting thing almost. Mm. Well, because it's got loads of clean headroom in my amp, mm. so if I'm hitting that hard, it can be a bit. Mm. But it just sort of makes it just. And there's a little bit of light natural compression yeah. with this circuit that just keeps things under control. Just makes a everything well. else a bit more controllable. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. And so you can use it. You can gain up to give quite a lot of dB boost. So you can oh, yeah. switch it in and out for a volume boost. You've got a loud well. drummer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you've got a boost as well on your So yeah, I'm mean, really happy with this because I, I tend to use shorter delays and like a slap back sort of thing that I stole from Matt Schofield and other people that play a lot better than me. Um, but I'm trying to twist your arm to make me uh or just you know well we've got it on we'll have it on record it you know yeah. so yeah we're gonna have to get you to agree we're gonna have yeah, to get, yeah. On, on making a delay yeah so what what i'd love i don't yeah, know if it'll it's, happen you know, i'd love there to be a slap delay yeah but also have the option of you know either a second delay or a pre i don't know what or switching to a longer so, delay so, so, or, yeah yeah some way of having a slap and it'll a happen. longer one a delay's on the cards okay there you how go. long you it would take how long it would take for me to actually yeah. Finish it and be happy with it. I'm literally it. gonna have to start hiding my pedals. So I'm gonna come home and Paige is gonna be like, oh, another one, you know. Baby needs stuff as well. Do you have like, to yeah, it in I this need two delays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he'll be all right. Priorities, right? I know. <laughs> So that's right into the into the JHS delay, and that's got a boost on it as well. So you do have like, yeah, get out of jail. I need more uh, playing with rich button. No, oh, really, yeah. yeah. I'm not that bad, guys. Don't don't tell this to him. Yeah, yeah. I just do a gig of rich, and it's just like right. I need, I need, I need. He needs all he can get to see. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have the licks, so I need. I to just plug in and just yeah, match him with volume. <laughs> Overpower him with volume is my only hope. So, and then yeah. from there, it was just all about getting on the board, making sense of it. Spent some time working out how to lay it out. I mean, so the, it was, the cabling is just awesome. Yes, yeah, so they're all handmade. Mm. I've made all the cables to fit this specific yeah. setup. Yeah, so we worked out where you wanted stuff, where you wanted access to most, but also um, playing that off against signal chains. So we're not running cables yeah. all over and the place, did, like the underground you know, system or something. You know? One of my questions was, would you recommend sort of a loop switcher or something like that? And um, you didn't think it was necessary because the way you could lay this out for me. I think you're on, on that, on the, on the, on the threshold of, yeah. yeah, it's like if you go for a few more pedals, then, or if you're using like very specific combinations of pedals, yeah. then maybe. But my first gig, just, I don't need one at the moment. Um, yeah. I, like Good I said, buffer I, runs all the. I'm using everything in little chain. blocks. So the pair with the humper. And another song, I might do the, the fuzz with the octopus. Very mm. rarely do I go, right, those two on, off, that on and off. It was sort of like. Mm. I think that's that's like your practical, manageable. Think, yeah, there's amount, things yeah. where you come in in terms of like if, if you guys are already going away and getting anything done, custom built. That's the expertise that comes in in terms of going. Well, I know that's going to do that with that. I know it's going to do that with yeah. that. And this is going to be a back. And the amount of flexibility in different combinations of pedals you can have. It depends on the player as well because yeah. I remember asking you. You know, do you have very specific sounds you yeah. want for like oh this song needs this thing? So mm. if you did, then you 
might yeah. want something programmable, for example. Mm. But you were like, I, I want to do it on the fly. I want to feel like I'm, I want to be able to turn things on and off. I yeah. want to control things and uh, I want to react. And one, this lets you do that. One so. gig, I might want to stick that with the solo. And one gig, mm. I, you know, just it's just yeah. nice having, sometimes when you end up playing the same gigs, or in our case, my case, the same sort of function sets all the time, you do get in a bit of a rut and it's just nice. One night I might stick the humper with it and the next one I might whack on the poker and suddenly I'm mm. a poor man's Brian May. So mm. it's just cool to have little options to like take you down a different path and stuff. Mm. But and, and it might look like, you know, <laughs> the way the way I've gone about this is a bit of a NRG effects loving or, uh, <laughs> one of those late night infomercials where we're, uh, you know, hi, have you seen that? No, but um, end of the day, if it sounded like crap, I wouldn't have bought any of it because I have bought all of this. It's my own money. Um, it's just because I personally have not heard anything else. Mm. Like and I was it. happy to recommend. Yeah, stuff to you. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Like you know, I'm well. It's so happy with the octopus. I mean, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. It's just that awesome. with the that with the roar of his. Mm. Yeah. Pretty special. Yeah. And then the only other thing is the power on the back. Then it's it? all power cabling and. Mm. So eat, yeah, eat your dinner off that. <laughs> so I yeah, mean, it's, yeah, it's lovely. Isn't it. I mean, that to me, just in terms of design, sound, build quality, it's just neat and tidy. Yeah. practical it's just everything it ticks all the boxes so and this was the voodoo yeah. lab voodoo lab yeah pedal power two plus mm. right yeah yeah pedal power two plus correct yeah um good quality industry standard mm. puts out really nice yeah clean power um just like you need yeah mm. can't go wrong with that and it attaches nicely to a pedal train like this so yeah that's, that's cool. awesome then it was just down to me to get it all together cable it all up and yeah well, I definitely couldn't have done that. But <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to lift it up and down like that if I'd have done it. So, uh, so you should, uh... yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> For those <laughs> mid gig <laughs> moments. <laughs> you can swing around your head. <laughs> nice. That's right. So what would be really cool is obviously going through the board and stuff, but just to find out more about you, your company, how it all got started, okay. how someone can have the <laughs> brain capacity to uh, <laughs> make these into a reality. Probably um, by losing lots of other things, but yeah. So how did it all start for you making pedals? Oh, um, not a clear, obvious path. Yeah. Um, I started out training as a luthier so i'm training okay. as a guitar builder yeah. repairer so that's where mm. so i played music since i was really young um play guitar and piano and other instruments as well uh, a little bit um and so i started out building guitars you know um so this is one of your yeah. <laughs> little uh, kind of this is this is this is yes yeah, so i'm more of a project so i have mm. learned and have built guitars from absolute scratch this one is ended up by mistake being my go-to guitar that yeah probably goes for every, every pedal I build gets tested with this thing because I just know it so well um it's just because it's a nice, straightforward plank. It's not one I've built from scratch. I found a surf green body mm. that I just, okay, I need that, bought yeah. that, and then found bits to go with it, basically. Yeah. So nice 50s style teddy neck. Yeah, it was great. Um, Love the scratch plate. It's yeah. The, oh yeah, I handmade the pick guard. That's a vinyl old um, John Lennon Imagine album that didn't play anymore. So it got repurposed. So I made that go. into a pick guard. Yeah, it's that there. Um, and yeah, just whack that together. Pick up strap, yeah, what? strap pick up at the neck. Okay, I like the combination um, of a strap pick up. You usually find tele neck pickups a little dark, a little weak compared to the bridge pickup, mm -hmm. and especially as I've got a like a broadcaster style bridge pickup in there. Oh, okay, so it's yeah. a bit more output, a bit beefier mm -hmm. than most tele nice. than your kind of average tele pickup, but still very vintage sounding. 
Mm. Um, I just found a some Fender US strap. Um, I've got boxes of old pickups I've taken out of people's guitars and <laughs> bought and found the nice kind of stuff. Um, it just matched nicely um, with that, with output wise. So got yeah, strap neck pickup in there and three way switching, mm. volume and tone. And I've got a series parallel as well, so I can actually put those into series. So run one into the other like a humbucker. Okay. So you get a thicker, um, slightly louder, more. So it's like almost like a four, or more, I suppose a four way switch. Then would it be? Kind of, yeah, like, like you'll get on a four way right. telly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what would be a like, so like yeah, four way mm. telly switch, the fourth position. But I've got it, so I can go to it easily any point from uh, any other position. Know. Cool. So. Cancel noise as well when you do it that way. Yeah, it's the hum cancelling it as well. Still, okay. so it's, yeah, pretty cool. And hum cancelling the middle there. That's nice. crazy. Yeah, and it's just my. I've got. I mean, you've got, I've got more expensive more, guitars. I've I mean, got better that's, guitars. That's technically like frigging electrical wire. I mean, that's. Oh big, yeah, I've got big, piano big. strings on there. So yeah. I've got twelves on there. <laughs> 12, um, right, yeah. And it's tuned in E flat, I think, isn't it? You said. Tuned E flat at the moment. Yeah. I use twelves in standard as well, but yeah, yeah it's. I it usually keep I keep it in E flat just because I'm working with so many other people's guitars. They're in E standard, I've, mm. and it just feels creative, it's just a psychological thing. I plug it mm. in and I play an E, and it's not actually an E, it's an E flat, and it yeah. just makes me think, keeps yeah. me on my toes, sounds a little different, and, um, and I'm using nice chunky strings. I just, for me, um, I've just ended up playing quite heavy strings. I've mm. set my guitars up in a certain way that just feels right to me. I don't do loads mm. of um, bending and solo work, yeah. um, but I can get it, I can do it, but if I, I like to. Struggle, yeah. Make yeah. me think about it. Make yeah, me yeah. try hard, you know. Yeah, choose your notes carefully. Yeah. yeah, and it it just works on this guitar. It's just, yeah. it just it sounds great. Just guitar even plugged in, the keys are So I mean, how how did you get from this then, from from Luthering to pedalable? I mean, <laughs> you know, pedals and design and electronics and it's kind of all the same part of my brain, you know? right. and it's the same part of my brain as playing music as well. There's something yeah. about that mixture of that kind of lovely mixture and fight between creativity and technicality of mm. how they feed into each other you know they loop back into yeah. each other so you know um so playing well meant me having a guitar that sounded good having mm. a guitar that inspired me things that inspire me so and being the way my brain works i've opened things up always have done since i was a kid you know open things up see how they work Voided so a few warranties <laughs> yeah yeah um modifying things modifying pedals yeah. amps that kind of thing guitars so I got to a point where I was kind of like, okay, I'm modifying pedals so much, I'm building little things for myself, and then other people started asking me for that. Mm. So I'd, at that time, I would like, I'd be looking after people's gear, guitar taking for people, touring that kind of thing, mm. um, and people come to me for technical things as well. So it just kind of evolved slowly. So I don't really have a start date for NRG mm. FX. I can't remember when I first put my initials on a pedal that I made. But can you can you remember the first? NRG or the, the pedal that you I wouldn't want to look at it now no, I'd, I'd, I'd bin it straight away I'm really? sure but, uh, but that's that no I wouldn't no, that's, no. that's 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 the evolution of stuff like that isn't it um, first thing little overdrive boost or fuzz kind of stuff yeah. tinkering with that building classic things yep. and then seeing how you can improve and ruin them basically and they'd start to understand
so I come more from the music side into the electronic side than the electronics engineering side it's, into yeah. into pedals. So I kind of that feel that's where I sit, and that's kind of why I try to understand what players want, and I start mm. off at that side. What does a player need in a practical, real situation? Yeah, and I think that's something you said. You know, really kind of struck home when I spoke to you last. When I come around to your workshop, you were just like, "These are like my." babies my creation mm. my pieces of art and creativity if other people like them yeah and pay them great i make stuff that went until i'm happy with it and that usually takes probably too long you know mm. i'm end up fiddling for hours late into the night but you then know, getting know, calls from the wife hurry up yeah it's been ready for ages or but whatever, when we um when i saw uh the purr on pick and mix and that pedal show yeah the one thing he commented on first was he opened it up dan opened it up because it's what he likes to do and he was floored by the, the build quality, yeah. the cabling. Um, so no, even, I, I'm very, yeah. Even though you're taking your time and doing it properly, it's obviously paying off because if you had just chucked it together, then, you know, yeah, you wouldn't make necessarily, it wouldn't be your thing. It's, it's, it's part of what makes things sound good and mm. quality and dependable, but also I just can't help it as yeah. well. It's kind of in my character um, and I hand make everything Hand paint, everything. hand wire everything to order, and hand paint everything. It just scratches that creative itch for me as well. You know, um, you yeah, you can call me out on it in the future, yeah. but you're not going to I mean, see me like get stuff made. As you'll see, yeah. you know, as you can see, in, you know, in the, the the design, the colours, the, the the little logo, everything is is very unique. You know, and it stands out. You know, you, you're going to spot that and go, that's an NRG. Like, no question. It's like is. It, so is there a little story behind that in terms of the colours and the reasons, or is it um, just something you kind of thought, well, you know what, I'm going to hand paint and just... Again, it's scratching creative itches, mm -hmm. you know? I yeah. could have probably quite happily gone into doing some design things and mm. art things and painting, and I, basically I'd get away with like painting cartoons on boxes full of wires and people yeah. give me money for it, so it's cool, you know, it <laughs> makes me happy. <laughs> have you ever built an awesome pedal, obviously it's just the casing, and messed up the paint? Uh, there, there's get outs. There's okay. get outs. I've got a limited amount of time to uh, to fix things. Right, so okay. um, so no. Yeah. But yeah, there's enough wood on this. So yeah, that counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's cool. Obviously, you had your range of the sort of Pera, um, the Aurora, yep. uh, the Barker, which is like sort of somewhere in between. It's between, it's yeah. my kind of what you'll call a distortion. So it's, yeah. it's gain up, it's um, what you call um, hard clipping. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's been your sort of stock sort of... Yeah, so it's all analog stuff, all handmade, um, and mainly those kind of what you'll call maybe tone pedals, so drives and... Mm. Um, fars, boosts, um, and that kind of stuff. It's been my main kind of core of things. Good place to start. Um, yeah, so the Barker fits between those two. Yeah. Um, yeah. So with the Pura, yep. what, what was the thoughts behind it? Again, that was what I designed for me. Like all my pedals, I've usually comes out of an itch of me wanting something yeah. myself. Mm. And it's worked out well that it seems to work out that's what other people want. Or when they play my stuff, they seem to... Yeah, it's worked so far. Let's yeah. see. Yeah. So um, when I'm playing, I've always wanted, I've always used or sought out um, a pedal that adds that little bit to a clean sound. So generally playing mostly almost clean, mm. but wanting that little bit of feel, little bit of character, little bit of interaction with something between my guitar and, and an amp.
So not just having all the headroom of an amp. Um, so something that compress a little bit, something that drive a touch. Mm. And the Pura was there for me trying to find that overdrive pedal that just has that little bit of drive when you hit in hard, a little bit of response. And then it developed to having, so that's where I started, make, get that right. So it's full range, don't lose any low end. You don't add or take away too much top end. It mm. sounds like you and your amp just with a bit more. Um, but then from there, I kind of added, you know, worked out adding more gain to that beyond that zone I was after, putting in two channels on the yeah. bigger version of the Pura. And case. the amount of amps that we and you have plugged this into, and we're yet to find whether it's mm. the hundreds of profiles we have on the Kemper, yeah. it always yeah. seems to work and it always sounds like what you're putting in. Mm. Mm. It's not like. I spent, again, pretty too much time <laughs> comparing the dry signal yeah. to the driven signal. So. Mm. Regardless of your signal you're putting in, it will only add and change as you've asked it to. Yeah. You know, that's kind of, that it's was the vibe the on that one. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, in terms of your pedals, uh, when you come up with, because you said you come from the music side into the engine, you know, the mm. electrical engineering side. So do you think you've got a, 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 perhaps an advantage in terms of you kind of want to engineer the sound in your head? Because, I mean, for instance, if you're thinking about, well, if someone's a pedal maker and they're mm. like, I've got a pedal, you know, but I'm not really coming from a musical background. I'm just kind of trying to make it sound like... I'm definitely doing it for a musical purpose anyway. Yeah, yeah I'm and trying do you to... think, I mean, mm. uh, to me, that almost seems like you... Uh, uh, makes more sense to do it that way around, you know? Like, so we go, I want it to sound like that and I understand why I want it to sound like that because yeah. that's that's my musical side coming through and then you're kind of then figuring it out, hence the whole, like, you know, configure... You know, I guess it's an advantage. It's the only way, it's the way I do it naturally. So yeah. it's all the only way I probably can do it, you know, or have at yeah. the beginning anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd always know what I'm, usually what I'm after. I'd start off with a goal and, mm. pr and a musical goal. Oh, I want to make a distortion that does this kind of thing, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then on the, along the way, I'll tweak and I'll play mm. and I'll find something else it does, or yeah. you know? Mm. And it will happen sometimes by accident, sometimes by a lot of time trying to make it do a certain yeah. thing. So you won't necessarily always end up what you initially thought you would have. Not always, sometimes. no. So it's like, oh. Or yeah, other pedals yeah, yeah. might spring off of that. Yeah, so oh, yeah, I've tried okay. to design an overdrive, but I found out, oh, actually, if I really overload mm. this bit, it turns into a cool fuzz. And then it's like, okay, write that <laughs> yeah, down. Yeah. That could be something yeah. else another day, you know? Cool. So have you got much, I mean, in terms of on the shelf stuff, like you kind of go, well, that did that, that did that, oh, I need to do that, that and that. I mean, what, what's, what's, what's the future? What, what, what's coming up? Is there anything coming up that we and the guys at home should know about? Um, I know we sort of pushed you for a delay pedal earlier on, didn't we? But... You pushed me for delay pedal, and that's something I want to do. Yeah, I'd like to be able to get to, um, to do to have you know you could have a completely a completely NRG board. You know, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, even yeah. Well, it's close, myself, it's, close it's pretty close there. <laughs> So yeah, um, I mean the monochrome series is new. The new monochrome yeah. series is a different approach. Um, but yeah, adding, um, I've I've tinkered with delays and reverbs mm -hmm. and done some things as custom jobs, but I don't have a standard yet in my range. Yeah, because I know I'll be again. It's it's just me doing it, so mm -hmm. it's R and D time is it's, yeah. precious and can be few. You know, few mm -hmm. amount of times I can do that. So, but from taking it back to the monochrome series, yeah, what what was it? Just you wanted something in a smaller enclosure more affordable um, yep. but still not sacrificing again it came from me trying to keep things fresh and creative for myself yeah. mm. so with what i now call the full color range that's my the black enclosures okay. hand painted yeah. all the colored knobs um the point of those was okay don't hold back go yeah. with within reason don't hold back you know um so i've kind of add everything i think think a player would use and benefit from um and not worry too much about complexity of that yeah and maybe not worry about you know how much time it takes me and therefore cost comes out of that. The monochrome range was to go complete start on the other other end creatively for myself, and it's been really refreshing actually mm. to say I've only got this size to work in. I've got to keep the budget in this kind of zone, um, and you've only got three controls. <laughs> um, and so also the idea then is you can it becomes a little bit maybe more modular, mm. and um, so you can use little pedals in different orders. Yeah. So I'm starting out, so the range is starting out with boosts, 
yeah. and different preamps and tone shapers. Um, and so that's where I'm at at the moment with um, three in the range um, with the poker, um, kicker and humper that have different styles of kind of boosting and tone shaping. Um, there's another one on the way um, that's going to be the last of the for the current kind of range of um, boosters that's going to be called the pumper. Okay. And that's to come out soon. So that's actually first people to hear about that. Um, Ooh, can you, can really you tell that? us a, a brief what it could uh, be? That's going to be your full range transparent. I want it louder. Okay. Everything louder. Mm-hmm. Um, that's going to be um, called the pumper because it's going to have voltage doubling inside. It's called a, 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 a voltage pump. Um, right. Um, so it's going to be producing 18 volts, loads of headroom, and that's going to have, I want more volume, and then you're going to have... Um, I'm not going to fit this on. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> High and low cuts on that as well. Yeah. So you can also tame in the top and the bottom mm. if okay. you're using it pre-gain or something just to, so you're not just slamming all the frequencies. So that's the next one. And then I'll start getting into more effects okay. kind of things. Mm. So there will be drives and fuzz and modulation things but again keeping analog keeping mm. handmade so yeah limited only by mm. yeah size and space so yeah well yeah that's brilliant so yeah i mean don't forget if you uh want to keep up with what's going on with nrg and neil um check out instagram you're on facebook yeah obviously the website so yep. you know we'll uh, put all the links yep. below um, but no, thank you for coming. It was awesome to hang out with you and quite a rare opportunity to hear the builders' thoughts yeah, and yeah. more importantly, cool playing yeah. um, whilst going through some of your range. Um, no, thank you. Um, honour. I believe I'm the first guest. Yes, you are, yeah. Uh, guest of honour. Thank Mr. you very Mr. much. Of NRGFX. Thank you very much. So yeah, see you again soon. And uh, yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bit of crap ending from me. <laughs>